Hey everyone, this is Joel and Noah from the Wealth of Health podcast. This podcast is a conversation of our journey to financial health. We think work until 65 just ain't it. And just like you, we're trying to make sure that never happens. And if you're interested in letting us know what you're trying to do to achieve financial health and want to join us in our journeys, join the discussion on our Facebook at the Wealth is Health podcast. Let's tap in. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Wealth is Health podcast. Uh, Joel and Noah back again, bringing you some information today. Right now, bro, I'm not even paying attention to what you're talking about right now. Why not? Huh? Why not? Because <laughs> I'm trying to get ready for the people, bro. I'm trying to get 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 the people what they need, bro. You say, oh, so you're telling everyone that you're not prepared for the podcast? Basically, is what you're saying? No, I'm saying I'm prepared, but this man wanted to start it at some. Oh, you said you said the you said the audience is not prepared. No, I'm saying you, bro. How am I not prepared? Look at the. Nah, never mind. You good, bro? Hey, there we you go. Good. That's what I thought. All right. Um, anyways, though, uh, I think, well, I not, I think I know what we're doing today is just sharing some knowledge. I feel like Noah's about to take over and really just preach to us for a little bit on some stuff. But before that, we're going to get into the updates and talk about the stuff that we were talking about last week real quick updates on like our, what we did for the last two weeks since we didn't record last week. Uh, Dang, you don't have to tell them that, bro. I mean, I'm trying. How are you just gonna snitch on us, bro? <laughs> That's crazy. Transparent as possible. Transparent as possible. Uh, we hope you. <clears> by <throat> the way, I hope if you all like the, if anyone's listening, well, please let me know if you like the new format for the YouTube videos. I know most people listen on, um, audio or on like Spotify, or whatever. But for this video in particular, I know we're gonna be sharing the screen, so you, you're gonna want to check out the YouTube video on our YouTube channel, Wealth Health Podcast. I'll put. Is this when they say like, "Oh, you're you're in for a treat," right? That's when yeah, they you're say in that. for a treat. If you, watch the video. <laughs> if you watch the video, and yeah, and subscribe to our channel too uh, for consistent, you know, stuff. Uh, but yeah. I think what we're planning on doing though is putting up uh, two videos now. So we're gonna putting numbers on the board. Putting numbers up on the board, and we're gonna put out two videos. One's gonna be the longer video, and then the, the next one's just gonna be like a shorter segment for people who just want to tune in for like this. Like the gems, I guess. Like the little sh- what, what are the gems, though? What are they about? I mean, you're about to tell us when we do that later on in the section. No, hold up, hold up. I feel we have to address that at the beginning, just in case. What do you mean? Oh, uh, Because uh, they may already tune out, you know what I mean? They'd be like, I don't That's true, that's true, that's true. Now. Well, I'm thinking, like, I'm thinking, like, if they're watching the shorter clip, like, this this part won't even be there for them. Like, they're not even going to see this part. This is going to be straight gem. But if you are someone who's watched the longer clip and you want to know what we're going to talk about... um. No, just tell me what you're talking about. You're talking about F.A. F.A. A.K.A. Fundamental Analysis. Yes, sir. Specifically when it comes to stocks, we'll talk about uh, fundamental analysis on crypto at another date. Maybe next week. Actually, no, because we're still talking about stocks next week, but the following week, maybe. Okay. But yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah, so Noah's definitely um, in his bag. He definitely knows what he's talking about for this one. So if you want to stick around and hear that. Uh, listen to the longer okay. podcast. If you don't want to stick around, I guess you can go over to our YouTube channel. Just make sure you subscribe to Noah. And no, you like fro- and a comment. You froze on me, Noah. No, you froze on me, bro. <laughs> I was looking at you, bro. That's cat. I was really looking at. But wait, what you, what'd you say? <laughs> I was saying like and leave a comment too. And hit that notification bell. That's what they say too, right? Fact, yeah, hit that notification bell and. Uh, yes, sir. Smash like button. I don't even know. All right. Anyways, <laughs> so we're gonna get. Let's get into the uh, the video. So last week I talked about the updates I had with. Uh, well, the only thing I have written down here is getting on top of this air test, uh, and that's because I have to take a test to qualify for my drone certification, pilot license, whatever. So um, that's been tough. I'm not gonna lie. I've I've been, I've been like. Last week, you told me I should what I should do is just try to make the business structure and then keep working on the test as I go along. Like, it doesn't even matter. But I was more focusing on trying to just halt everything I'm doing and focus on the drone test. But mm-hmm. I've basically fully adopted your approach because I've started uh, organizing, like, the business I have a lot better. I didn't even have a running log of the projects I've been working on with people. So I got, like, my Excel sheet for all of the dates of the times like I've, I've worked with people. Um, so we have that like ironed out, got a few more stuff with some people planned out for the future. And then I have content that I'm going to be posting on my Instagram. So if you want to see the content I post for video, a little shameless plug, you can follow me on JRJ imaging. Uh, that's just what it is on Instagram. Don't have any, anything else. Instagram is probably the biggest one. Um, I'm thinking about making a, 
uh, website, but I just don't think that people care enough to go on it right now. I think. Dang, bro. That's how you feel about yourself? Because I'd have to optimize the search engine for like people to be like, all right, yo, like I'm going to go to this page. But I feel like more people just look on Instagram because it's a visual appealing app anyways. But if someone wants to book me, they can just DM me rather than looking up like photographers in your area even though that's definitely a good idea and i should definitely actually now i should do that um but besides the air test though uh stuff's going well i've been focusing a lot on school in the last two weeks it's like midterm season so i had some exams on like monday a project presentation and then like another exam in two days from now that i should be studying for but instead i'm doing this so you see where my priorities are at uh but it's <laughs> but it's 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 fine because i'm sure it'll be good open notes um but yeah i mean that's so that's all the stuff that we have i had like i want to update everyone from the two weeks ago when i when we made it uh, i'll talk about the updates i wanted to do for the next week as we go on um should we just do it where i get into my updates now or should we just go to what you had like from two weeks ago that you want to like update everyone on no i think you can go Okay. All right. So good news. I'm going on a trip to Vermont. Going to spend some money. Yes, sir. No, hey. that's actually a lie. I'm actually going with my family. They booked an Airbnb up there. So they're the ones spending money, thankfully. Um, but I haven't had like a break, I think, from anything for so long. Oh, my God, bro. I've been recording without a... You see what you made me do? You see what you made me do, No, I have <laughs> not recording been... recording without what? Finally going on a trip somewhere. I've been, I haven't gone on a trip in, I don't think, in, since the summertime. So it's going to be good to like take a break from everything. I have a coaching call tomorrow. Um, I don't know if coaching I should mention for this for the rental arbitrage course I took. Where? But I don't know <clears> if I want to. I'll just say that's what it is. Um, the gym routine is going good. I've just been on it, like consistently been on it. I'm going to go to the gym after this. They close it like a little bit less. Where were you not going to say? I wasn't going to I'm not going to say it because I don't know if you nah, want me say to it, say it yet. Say it, bro. No, nah, I don't know what you want me to say. No. Nah. I want you to say it, bro. Go ahead. Bro, because I'm not going to I'm not gonna take the time to cut it out of the video if you don't want me to say it. That's such okay, a poor that's fine to say it. <laughs> all right, all right. So I was going to say that you also are hopping on the course with me, but I don't know if you want people knowing that, like, what you're yeah, about to do. Yeah, bro. But, all right, that's crazy. Okay. Because I was going to say, like, if, if you're hopping on the course... I don't know. It's kind of your business. I don't know what you're really planning on doing, and I know you keep your moves in like the shadows until you're guaranteed ready. But basically, Noah Hop asked for the course information. I hope the people listening to that podcast, the people who made the course, aren't listening to this. Uh, oh, but, <laughs> but what Noah did was he basically just looked over my shoulder while I was on the course looking at it, and he just took some notes. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I was saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's good though because um. It just is good when other people are kind of like, that's going to sound weird, in your bag too. So if I have like ideas about this concept and he knows more about it, then we can bounce ideas off of each other a lot more, um, which is great. So yeah, besides the gym routine being good, that's basically like all I have for updates. It's been like, it's been pretty just like, a, I don't know, grind mode. Nothing like crazy has happened besides the fact that I got a new computer that I spent a lot of money on to edit my videos a lot better. So it's like more of like a business expense because it takes the production time for my videos. It takes so much less time to edit a video now with this new computer than it did before. And now that I'm editing a lot of videos, editing time is like a serious thing that I need to make sure I'm efficient as possible in. So it's awesome I got a new computer. It's an awesome computer. If you wanna know what it is, uh, you gotta subscribe then I guess and leave a comment. <laughs> Down yeah, email, and then I'll answer that. <laughs> That's comment. crazy. You gotta get uh, an affiliate uh, link and put it in the description, or I'll put it in the description. Yeah, I actually, yeah. If if I can link it to like Amazon, I know they do that stuff. So yeah, if you're interested, comment down. Ask me what computer I'm using. It's awesome, and then we can have some final, like some interaction with our with our people. Um, but that's all I have for updates. I'm gonna pass it on to you now. Wait, what what are you gonna do for next week? Oh, I was gonna talk about that at the end. Like, as a closing? Okay. But you know what, bro? I guess we can talk about it now. I guess we can talk about it now. That's fine. That's fine. If there's one concrete goal I want, I want to create all the branding stuff for my personal JRJ imaging, like, a photography account on Instagram. Um, because I have right now, It's it was my old account name, which was J.Roach Photography. But I wanted to say 
JRJ imaging and then start to include the stuff like the behind the scenes work, start posting the, I have so much content. The thing is I just have to wait for the people who I give it to, to post it first. Like the one I did for um, Tyler, like mm-hmm. I got to make sure like he posts that video first. So I'm not the one like putting it on display before. Like, I don't know if he has anything planned or you know what I'm saying? So yeah. same thing with Eli's videos too. Like I'm not going to post like a whole, like one of his videos if he doesn't <clears throat> post it first. So that's what's annoying about it. Yeah. So that's a little annoying about it, but it's, it's like doable because he, he, they've started posting stuff so I can like start slowly putting out my content and I can always do behind the, the scene shoot. So branding for that stuff is important. And honestly, I really got myself thinking that maybe a website wouldn't be the worst. Just like learning how to optimize a site's SEO is so frustrating. So I'm not going to do that within the next week at all, especially if I'm going to, to Vermont, bro. I have like four days then and I have exams I literally need to study for. So I'm probably going to save that for like two weeks in advance uh, and then just focus on getting this Instagram thing up and running. Okay. Say. So the goal for next week is to start the, um, what, the marketing? Or the Basically, branding? yeah, the branding. Yeah. The branding? Okay. Where? Yeah, I'd say that. All right. My turn? Yes, sir. Word. So. Wait, um... actually, I wanted to. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> All right, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I was going to say to, or just reiterate the point that, um, it's actually really important for y'all to be doing this in terms of like like tracking your progress on like a weekly basis and all that um, and actually following up like the next week to see like what you've accomplished um, because you're really only going to get uh, better if you're actually tracking your progress and it's better if you're doing it kind of in smaller increments so you know, all right, cool, like I'm actually on track to, to get here some like someday, you know what I mean? Like I'm actually taking real steps versus I'm just sitting here talking about it. But yeah, so mine from last time was to sit down with um, my property manager that's coaching me to see if I'm basically ready to um, take on like more ventures, like specifically like uh, the birth strategy when it comes to real estate. So buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. And he basically um, gave me the green light. He said it was it was straight. Um but he was just saying that what would make me essentially like feel better about it would be like w- like to actually start it once my first floor situation is handled. So he was saying that uh, like including everything that I should be completely like all together. I'm assuming in terms of like getting a new tenant in and like rehabbing the unit beforehand, I should be like good by February 1st. So he was saying that I should start hunting for properties in January um, because it's going to take time to even find something. Uh, But in the meantime, I could kind of figure out my um, my strategy of how I want to approach finding a deal. Um, And it was cool because he actually mentioned that he would be interested in partnering on a property. So that's kind of fire, um, especially because he has way more experience than me. He's way smarter, has way more connections. but he had also dropped a podcast a while ago where he was saying that he's interested in Airbnb. And <laughs> he mentioned the location he was interested in. Um, I mean, I guess I'll just say it. it's not that serious, but he's No, interested. wait, 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 wait. It kind of is serious, though. So you're saying I shouldn't tell the people? Nah, tell the people. Tell the people. Okay, that's what I was saying. I'm like, bro, it's just our people, bro. Like, God, I'm not telling the world. I know, that's true, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, but, um, yeah, so he was thinking New Hampshire. I haven't done the research, so I don't know. Oh, oh, and I was going to say, too, so if y'all ever listen to the Bigger Pockets Real Estate Rookie Podcast, he actually interviewed one of the hosts of that podcast. His name is, uh, I think it's Tony J. Robinson. But that guy is known specifically for short-term rentals. So, um, yeah, they they were on that podcast together. Um, But, yeah, so since he's interested in that, and he also said he was interested in partnering, I'm like, dang, I wonder if it would make sense for me to just pursue that strategy instead. Um, Also because, um, like, right now, I'm more interested in increasing, like, my consistent cash flow that's coming in. And 
it seems as though right now things could change, but in my head right now, it seems as though Airbnb would actually the better be the better approach if I'm looking specifically for cash flow, more so like right away if possible, versus doing uh, the bear strategy, because I feel like I could potentially even get like the majority of the cash flow that I'm looking for with one property <laughs> from the numbers that I've been hearing from. <clears throat> With one Airbnb, you mean? Yeah, with one Airbnb property or one short-term rental property. Um, okay. Wait, like where? On a basis. Would you like go? Would you try to do New Hampshire too? If you were doing that, like I, I'm just curious on where the numbers are coming from for that. Yeah. So the numbers that I'm talking about is more so just from what I've heard from different podcasts and things like that. Okay. I haven't done research on any specific area yet. I'm not mm-hmm. in that that portion of of the course when I've been looking over your show. Oh yeah. The show, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. Um, but yeah, I'm waiting on actually kind of seeing the numbers and getting, I guess like the business together in a way to really, okay. um, or even just understanding the business more to really make a final decision of like what I'm definitely going to do. Um, but I, I need to have a decision made by the time, um, my first floor is renovated and I have new tenants in. Like I, I have to be on go mode then. So in the meantime, I'm still, <clears throat> in my opinion, I still have time to figure out the approach that I'm going to take. Um, okay. Oh, wait, can I ask yeah. you a question then about yeah, that? So, uh, I'm, so it seems like right now you're using Airbnb and this is everyone who's doing Airbnb is for money. It's, it's, it's good money and it's fast, but is it going to take you, are you trying to set it up in like the two months that you have? of like being free, like you're not really, you're just waiting for your tenants to get out or is this something you're trying to do after your tenants get out, but you're still trying to, like you want to do the Burr property in February, right? That's the ideal timeline. I don't really care. <laughs> okay. I don't care about it like pursuing any specific like strategy. I'm just saying like a strategy has to be in place, especially for me to hit like my, your my goals. like financial goals. You know what I mean? Okay. So and this, wait, is, wait. this is actually an important conversation, but I feel it's going to take us down a rabbit hole. Go ahead. Yeah, but just yeah. All right, maybe maybe not. Just, no, 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 go ahead. Not go to ahead. bring it down the rabbit hole, but like I just want to know, like, are you planning on like I know <clears> you haven't <throat> picked you haven't picked a, a, a I guess avenue to venture down yet, but are you, if you were to choose the rental arbitrage approach, would it not be I a long term arbitrage? Not rental arbitrage. Sorry, just air. I mean, it's like the same thing though. Or would you use your own property well, it, to do it? Yeah, I would use my own property. Okay. So well, well, not not the property that I own. I'm saying. Like after my first floor situation is handled, I would be looking to buy another property and then um, do a short term rental strategy for that property. Okay. So, okay. So it's okay. So this would be after, like this would be February time period. Okay. So, okay. So you're looking to completely buy a property. Are you looking to, okay. I know you don't have like any information about that. So this is not a long term solution that you have. This is just like a short term cash thing that you wouldn't want to be in this long term. No, I mean, I would. Why would I not do it long term? I don't know because the way you said it, like, I the way the way I, I heard it was like you want to do this Airbnb thing to get that quick, fast cash, which it will give you, and then you want to switch over to Bird. That's what I'm understanding. From no, what you're saying. so not necessarily. Um, to me, it's just like like how are the numbers looking? <laughs> like, okay. you know what I mean? Like, if it makes more sense to just focus on like a short term rental business, I'd rather mm-hmm. just do that. If people end up, yeah, if people end okay. up like tossing me bird deals or they want to partner or whatever, then we can do that too. Okay. But it might not be like an actual main focus. Okay. I'm I'm still more so looking for like, like what is my true like main focus or main business going to be? That's more so what I'm debating right now. Okay. 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 Because I thought you were just going to like switch over like that. I was going to say, why would you? Nah. That would be crazy. Nah. All right. That makes a lot more sense to me. So yeah. when would you be um, looking to, I guess you don't even know. I guess you No, go know. ahead, bro. That's I was going to say, like, when, when are you looking to, like, start? I know you're starting the course now. Let's say you finished it in, like, a month because you're on demon time like that. Would you be looking to do it while a tenant's still in your place, or are you trying to do that in February when you're cleared, too? No, so I would still be looking while um, that situation is getting figured out because it takes a while to, to buy a property. Oh, it yeah, takes sure. a while I keep to forgetting you to buy a property. A property. You know yeah. I mean? yeah, I keep like... forgetting you're trying to buy a property, yeah. Yeah, because think yeah. about even Yuri in our group. Like, he's been looking for months already. Yeah, that's insane. So, it's going to yeah. take a while. So, I don't mind starting it immediately. Um, I just need the information first. So, that, that that's what I'm getting to right now. That's awesome. That's a great idea. That's a fantastic idea. It just takes, yeah, oh but, my God, dude. It's just so easy when you're your own landlord for this type of stuff. I think so. 
But for, it's a lot more capital intensive, though. That's the thing. Yeah, what you ha- so, what you have though, I feel like you have that. Yeah, it's always frustrating though, because it's like I have it, but it's like, am I willing to take it from where it's at in order to put yep. it here? So that's yep. something that's research that I have to do like on my own time, like going through my my finances and all that. Um, okay. I I personally think I could do it though. I think you just like too. just I off really top. <laughs> I really think you could do it just right now if you wanted, but that's yeah, I, I think so. I think so, but um, yeah, I'm I'm not just I'm not gonna confirm it until I. I look at my situation again. But I was going to say the important part of this thought process is, um, so remember last last episode we were talking about that book, Think Again? Yep. Yeah, so um, my thing ab- about it was, um, like for me, I feel like it's it's never really like, like a black and white thing. Like it's either this or it's that. So for me, I'm going to read books and listen to people that are talking about planning like multiple steps ahead. And then I'm also going to read books from people that are like, nah, you need to think in like a shorter time period. Like, what is just my next move? Because like, I'm constantly receiving new information. You know what I mean? So it's like, sometimes I'm going through like software updates. You know what I mean? So even my my original approach to financial independence has changed so much. Like before I was just like, yeah, I'm just going to index fund my entire way there. Yeah, stop that. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yep. And then before I, I was like, yeah. And then before I was like, Sorry, after that, I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll just do like this traditional rental strategy. You know what I mean? So like, I'm going to be putting like 20% down on these properties or whatever. Like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so as I'm receiving new information and new opportunities are just presenting themselves, I'm going to adapt and I'm going to change. So I'm going to have kind of like a framework that I'm going to be working with. Like I'm looking to hit, hit like these like core type of, um, I don't know how you would say it, like, but whatever like i have (laughs) like a certain foundation that i'm building from but i'm willing to kind of like take different paths in order to get to the same place is what i'm really trying to say i guess but yeah it it was interesting though i don't know if you were there when we were having this conversation with tyler who we might actually have on the podcast so stay tuned um and tyler's a kid that that you were just uh doing a shoot for in case Mm -hmm. they don't know but um, yeah, we were having a conversation outside that same day that, that you were shooting for him. And um, he was talking about like this idea of visualizing like exactly like what the goal is. So for example, for me, he was like, oh yeah, like, so if you want to do the birth strategy, like you should be visualizing or spending a lot of time trying to visualize like what it would feel like or what it would look like when you're like walking into the property and they're like fixing it and like doing all of this stuff or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, I I don't know. I'm not really like fully rocking with that idea because of how like my mind personally works. And um, I was saying, because for me, like the birth strategy is not the end goal. Like even in a, I guess more short to medium term, cause I'm probably going to be like financially independent fairly soon, like within the next couple of years, probably. Um, but right now that's more so kind of like my main focus and I don't really care about the exact way to get there. So I don't want to spend time visualizing and even doing like affirmations and stuff like that, like being very specific about the process of how, of like what I'm going to do to get there. Because like, I don't, I have a thing about like wasting time. (laughs) I I, I knew it, bro. (laughs) I was about to ask you, you think that'd be a waste of time, but you can't, you answered it right there. Yeah, well, I don't think it would be a waste of time like doing the affirmations and the visualizations and stuff like that because I've run simulations in my head all the time and I I already do uh, affirmations on a daily basis. So are you gonna say something? No, yeah, I was just gonna say, but it, it's just when you just don't know what your full bag is and you're wasting time like affirming something that you don't even know if that's a path like you're trying. Yeah, to Yeah, exactly. So I don't want to do that, and I was um because he was saying like it. I was probably explaining myself weird, but he was taking it as. Like, the birth strategy is the end goal. And I'm like, no, bro, I don't care about the birth strategy. Like, for me, like, the only reason why I pursue that strategy is in order to become financially independent faster. Yep. But if I can find another opportunity that's going to get me there faster, I'm just going to take that instead. <laughs> like, that's, yeah. that's just how um, I, I operate. But some people, it's harder to think like that because I think on a very, like, very meta level, very abstract level, big picture all the time. And most other people are, are a lot more concrete. Like, they need these, like, physical steps and just follow through on this plan. Um, but yeah, so so different people are just different, I guess, is what I'm really trying to say from all that. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, nah, yeah but yeah, don't, don't be afraid to think again. 
to, yeah, what I, to reconsider what, what you had originally planned. What I wanted to say is uh, to everyone is I'm very excited that Noah hit me up to look over my back for that course because this is something I've been talking about for I feel like a little while now about like wanting to do rental arbitrage. I've tried doing it over the summertime. It didn't like go as planned, but that's just because of I feel like it's mostly monetary reasons for me. Um, but either way, I'm excited that he's in it. Uh, and then for anyone that doesn't know, rental arbitrage would be me taking a property uh, or just asking like the landlord, the landlord of a property if I can take their property and put it on Airbnb. One of the most difficult parts of this process is convincing someone the first the first person to you have to convince to to rent out their property uh, so you can do whatever to it. The benefits for that though is that you don't have to like necessarily do any like maintenance stuff on like let's say the fridge stops working. That's not an expense on your part because you're not the landlord. So those are like the benefits. But if Noah's going to do this where he buys a property, it's way mo- it's way easier to control to do anything to like have anything happen. It's his property. He can do whatever he wants. It's and you and for the most part, like you're going to get 100 percent of the profit all the time. Because sometimes like uh, landlords even want a portion of your profit because you let them do it. And I think they're catching on to the fact that this is such a good opportunity and they should be capitalizing on that. So it's really tough to see like this opportunity like right in my face and I can't take full advantage. But I'm happy that Noah's doing it. I hope you continue that. Uh, and then I think we can just move on to the next part of this. That's all I have to say about that. Word. <clears throat> Word. So, um, Jeez. right? <laughs> but for, <laughs> before, uh, like my goal for this week, uh, what I'm trying to do is just connect with different lenders. Um, and I'm going to be asking them questions essentially around the birth strategy and also um, like this uh, short term rental business. So I'm really looking for uh, someone had told me recently. Actually, let me start off like this. So the standard for like when you're doing a cash out refinance, which is obviously the refinance portion of the birth strategy is 75 percent. They're willing to. Um, to do a cash out refi for 75% of the loan to value. So um, I heard recently from someone else that he found a lender that that can do 80% loan to value, which is more attractive to people like me. Um, So I'd rather do that. But I'm still trying to find someone (laughs) that actually does that. So I'm interviewing for that. And then I'm also going to ask just for their different um, qualifications when it comes to financing for vacation homes, because essentially Mm -hmm. I would be buying a vacation home, which would allow me to put a smaller down payment than if it was a true investment property. Typically for investment properties, um, they would like you to put 25% down, whereas for a vacation home, they would like you to put uh, 15% down, from my understanding right now. So I'm asking different people about that. And also, um, what are the qualifications? Like I heard that essentially... They want you to live there for like however many days or however however many weeks a year. So I had to kind of block out like that schedule as well um, for me to live there. <laughs> yeah, I was say, That's the craziest thing. And yeah. also, um, the, like if they're willing to or what what are their financing terms if you're operating out of an LLC? So like if I do pursue like the short term rental strategy. I would prefer to operate out of an LLC, but I'm wondering, like, can I buy the property directly through an LLC? Or is there, like, another way that I may need to (laughs) consider going about it? Um, But, yeah, I did talk to someone today about that, and they said that, or he said that they do uh, 20-year loans if you're going through an LLC. But he also said I had to put 20% down instead of 15%. So I'm just going to be asking different people. Um, and then they only locked the rate in for five years with that guy that I was talking about. So right now, if y'all don't know, <laughs> rates are really low. We don't know what the rates are going to be like in five years. So some people are kind of like, oh, it doesn't really matter. You can fi- uh, refinance whenever or like it's five years from now. Don't even worry about it. So I got to figure out, like, is this something I would actually need to worry about? Or can someone just like lock me in for a longer time period? Like whatever the case is. But I'm going to be trying to figure that out like throughout this next week. I got a question for you, Noah, because yep. I'm not like 100% like versed on the birth strategy, but for the refinance portion, so like you, you've repaired the property, you have it rented out, and uh-huh. now you, you're going to get it appraised, like reassess the value of the property now, right? Yeah. And so the, the some, 
Wait, hold on real quick. For that portion of it, the um, the refinance portion. So mm-hmm. just to get it clear, let's say you got a property that on paper like is like, okay, now this is appraised for $375,000. Someone's willing to pay that 75% of the 375000 Is that how it works? So basically, um, and just for terminology purposes, when you guys are talking to other investors, so what they're considering like the property to be worth after um, you fix it up is called the ARV, which stands for after repair value. Um, so when you're doing the bird strategy, at least from from the bird book specifically from bigger pockets, um, they say that you want to be in the deal for 75% of um, the ARV. Okay. Which means, for example, if the property is uh, if the property is going to be worth a hundred thousand after you fix it up, like the amount of money that you put, like that you pay for it, and also like whatever money you're going to use to actually renovate it and do the rehab, um, you would only be able to to be in for seventy five thousand total. Like if your numbers go past that, then it's not that that you destroyed your deal, but you're going to be leaving some money in the deal. So just like to say, for example, like you put in uh, 75,000 for this property, like that's what you paid for it and how much it cost you to rent for it in total. So now when you go to a bank and you ask, um, for the cash out refinance, they're going to give you your money back. All the money that you put into it. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And they're going to give you 75% of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you, so basically if you spent $75,000 to repair it, you just break even and walk away. Yeah, but the the purpose of the strategy is even though like you're breaking even in that sense, you still have the property to hold as a rental. Oh yeah, that's and you have that capital to to roll into another property now. Yeah, typically you're not really gonna buy it in cash. Like you're mm-hmm. gonna use like uh, what they call like hard money, which is kind of like private money. We I think we talked about it before, but yeah, so you you wouldn't really need to put in seventy five thousand dollars. You would like in that sense, if you're going through hard money, you obviously need to pay the hard money lender back, like whatever he gave you for the property as well. Wait, wait, why am I okay? All right, I'm just gonna move on from this so we do not <laughs> keep because, yeah, we're gonna take up too much time, but but all right, so just real quick though, the, the purpose of it is you're not trying to leave any money in the deal, so like you acquired this whole property, you're holding it as a rental, and you didn't actually put or you're not holding any money left in the deal. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I definitely. And then okay. you could just buy more properties with that. Yeah, it's I, similar I'm... to like. All right, all right. Last example. Last example. This yeah. is when it comes to stocks, right? So okay. let's say, for example, um, you buy a stock and it's worth one hundred dollars, <laughs> right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And then that stock goes to two hundred dollars a share. So you doubled your money. At this point, now you can take your original investment back out. And let the profits just roll. So now your profits keep moving, and you have that that money to go put into another stock. You see what I'm but, saying? Yeah, I see. Okay, the the part that I'm confused at is, so let's uh, like I'm gonna go through this as quickly as possible so we can get to the real part of this video. <laughs> but it's like let's say you bought a property for one hundred thousand dollars because you assessed that it could go to three hundred thousand dollars, right? No, nah, I feel like it, when you start using bigger numbers, it's gonna make it different. Like, it's All right, let's, make it more complicated. Hard, hard. Okay, let's just say you bought a property for a thousand dollars. Like that just is ridiculous. A hundred thousand. No, I feel like yeah, a hundred thousand. That's a good even number. Yep, Same you point. bought a property for. But well, I'm saying like you have to buy the property knowing <clears throat> that you're gonna get it at a higher. Like you, you know, it's gonna go up. The the ARV is gonna be way higher than the original value, right? Yeah. So, so. essentially, you'd be looking for comps or comparables. So you'd be looking for yeah. other properties that are similar in the area. And when they're all fixed up, they're selling for a hundred thousand dollars. So this property okay. might be, you might acquire the property, like the purchase price is $40,000. Oh, yeah. It yeah, cost $35,000 to fix it. So now you're in yep. it for $75,000. Yeah. So, 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 worth keep, so if we keep going from there, right? $75,000, because that's what they're willing to give you back, right? The mm-hmm. bank or whatever. Who is, is the bank just going to give you the money? Like you get your hard money lender and you're like, yeah. okay, like I'm going to do this, right? They're like, okay, cool. They give you the forty thousand dollars. I I know it's like technical because they don't give you everything, whatever. But let's just say you got yeah. forty thousand dollars to buy the property. You have thirty five thousand dollars also from them to do the repair, right? 
Yes. I know it's like I know like the technical stuff is crazy. Like no, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, so yeah. they they're basically giving you seventy five thousand. Everything. Yeah, yes. yeah. So, so they give you seventy five thousand dollars. You're done. You're you're done. Like the property's repaired, and you go you go to get it reappraised. The part I'm confused at is, does a bank just say like, all right, forty thousand dollars? So we're just gonna give you a hundred thousand, like seventy five thousand dollars, because it's supposed to be a hundred. Like they just give that to you. Um. Like that's the part I'm confused at because are they not buying the property back from you? Then that's why I'm confused. Because I was like, then how do you have the property still? Because then you'd have to use that money to pay the hard money lender back. And that's why I was thinking to break even without a property left. Then now you're making me think about it. Hold that's on. what that's what I was confused. Because <laughs> I was thinking about the loan part. I was like, wait, you're not even taking out. You are, but it's the hard money lender, so it's not like. Yeah, okay. So here's the thing. So they're giving you the check for the 75000 in this case. Right? The bank. Yes. Mm-hmm. But you owe them 75000 still because it's a loan. You see what I'm saying? So, but the oh, difference is, yeah, the hard money 30, lender gave you a loan, but it's a shorter term. Yeah. Like it's a shorter time period. So the bank is going to give you the 75000 Yeah, you're basically giving it directly to the hard money yeah. lender to pay them All back. Right. Yeah. And now you still have to pay that seventy five thousand, but over whatever. The thirty years. Is. Okay. Is it usually thirty years? Um. Or can it, is it? I believe so. Uh, I believe that, so, but it might it might depend on a certain amount of factors and all that. And what type of like loan you get? Like, is it a home equity loan? Is it a home equity line of credit? Because sometimes uh, it will be a shorter time period for that. I have so many questions, bro. But yeah. So does but either mean, way, it's, it's a significant period of time. Like yeah. Okay. 15, All 20, right. 30 years. So do you not pay like, like, do you not have to pay like mortgage insurance then if that's the case? Since you're putting basically 0% down on a property, if you think about it like that. Uh, So you wouldn't be paying mortgage insurance, but you'd be paying like insurance for the property the, still. Oh yeah, yeah. Like the the property taxes, uh, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, like you still have like the whole PITI principal interest taxes insurance and all that too. Okay, all right, that makes more sense to me. Yeah, so it's not gonna be like exactly like even, you know what I mean? Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. I get that. All right, yeah, that was good. that was tough. No, but that was good that we went over that because like everyone else listening is probably hella confused by that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. All right. Imagine I explained it completely wrong. <laughs> no, no. You, that sounds right. Because I remember I was explaining it at one of the events. So I got to plug my computer in so it doesn't uh, die. But I remember yeah. you explaining it. And I had that question. But it got like, it made sense to me then. So that worked. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like when you just get into the technicalities of it, it, it does get like yeah, really confusing. Especially if you haven't like officially done it yet. But um, yeah. All right, well, now we can get into the real topic. <clears throat> hey, fundamental analysis. Wait, actually, maybe you should introduce it because you you might have, like, a little disclaimer, right? Uh, yeah, so I guess I'll start with my part. Then I, I, you know, I, I, That works out pretty well. So fundamental analysis is basically how um, Noah, I guess, and I mean a lot of people, analyze these stocks to make sure that they're, they're viable options, that they're not just – random stocks it, it basically is a good way to understand what you're buying based off like their track history uh it's it's very good it's a good way there's fundamental and technical analysis uh but obviously we're focusing on fundamental today the reason i don't care about fundamental analysis and it's not i don't care it's not <laughs> i don't you care. gotta say it like that though. it's not it's not i don't you care put the extra spice on it too. i know i know it's the not reason that I fundamental care. analysis is trash, is trash. <laughs> <laughs> no the reason the reason i don't care about it uh, as much um, is because uh, it's a good way to analyze stocks, but I don't personally like to spend time analyzing stocks <clears throat> because because that's just not my bag. I just don't do that. So what I do uh, is I invest in index funds. Um, index funds, for anyone that doesn't know, I have a YouTube channel that talks about this stuff too. I actually talked about That's crazy because we also great. have a YouTube channel together where we talked about it. As That's one true. Of the first episodes. We really did talk about <laughs> it too, but I, I, I did get like crazy in depth about like index funds and like how investing uh, like in a personal portfolio is honestly like there's no real point. So I personally invest the, in an index fund for not even that reason. I invest in index funds because they're great. Every like Warren Buffett recommends index funds. He says one of the greatest ways you can build wealth over time. 
But he also it, said for people that don't know what they're doing. Basically, for the average person. <laughs> but I'm yeah. not I'm not doing it because I'm trying to be the average person. I'm more doing it because I'm trying to focus on endeavors that will make me more money so that I can put them in to the, the index funds that I'm in. So it's only because analyzing stocks is not necessarily my bag. I know for Noah, like he has, he does options trading. This is definitely going to help him understand the field that he's doing. There's going to be synergy between between these fields. But for me, if I'm trying to do rental arbitrage or photography, like doing technical or fundamental analysis on a stock is not important to me at all. So because of that, if you're someone who's trying to focus on doing another endeavor or trying to make more money in your own personal business, it might be a better option to put your money into an index fund. S&P 500 is a great one. Can we get um, some ticker symbols, bro? Uh, I, I use VOO. Uh, you can use, I mean, I, I just use VOO to be honest with you. I don't even care about like really anything else. Uh, but <laughs> no, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, dude. I, it's just the VO, <laughs> S&P 500. That's all I care about. That's all I care about, bro. The tech sector okay. is all I care about, bro. I don't care about anything else. And that's okay. just because. Let's get some v, some VGT. Yeah, VGT. Tech, you know what I mean? um, what XOK is another one for tech. XO, I actually, uh, what's the one from the, what's the innovation one? I forgot. Arc. Okay. Arc. Yeah, that's doing Disruptive terribly, innovation. but I'm not worried about well, that. Well, it might be, it might be getting its act together now because Tesla's because of Tesla. Tesla. And it has Tesla yeah. in there. I did, I did see Tesla going crazy. Uh, but yeah, no, like I'm saying though, like this stuff is um, better for, for me. And I, I bet it's better for a lot of people who are just trying to do their own side bag type stuff. So for can that you talk reason. About, can you talk about in terms of dollar amount too? Like the, the dollar amount that you're investing? Does that play a part? What do you mean? Because well? before, like on the video we have on the IG, you were like, oh, I don't care about... If Amazon uh, drops, oh 10%, yeah, because yeah, oh you mean like just because it it doesn't like tech? What do you mean like it doesn't matter in terms of? Bro, like, I'm talking about what you mean. You're the one that said it. I can't. Uh, you want me? You want me to kind of say you were basically like if you don't, <clears throat> if you're not investing a certain dollar amount, like a significant. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter. Money, yeah, it does. Yeah, I forgot why, that I though? said that. Why does it not matter? Though? So it doesn't matter because it won't affect your life in like the grand scheme. Let's say let's say you have like Amazon stock and you just made a thousand dollars in a day. That's great and all, but $1,000 is not going to affect your life in the grand scheme of things. If you had $100,000 in and you got $100,000 worth of, of gains, that's going to significantly affect your life. But to get $100,000 of gains, you either have to be putting you have to be putting that money in and you got to get that money from somewhere. And uh, if it's not like doing options trading or something else, you're basically wasting your time. And the way they explain it in Set for Life is pretty good too. Uh, they say basically like the people who say they make their own portfolios and they said, oh, I gained a thousand dollars, let's say over the course of a month, you probably could have made way more money like delivering pizzas, bro, at that point. And, and uh, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Uh, I'm gonna make well, I don't know about in a, month, in a month, but in a month, yeah, like it wasn't, it wasn't a, month, a couple yeah. months or a year or whatever. Like if you're bragging about that. Yeah. If you, yeah. That, there's no real point. I think the, the example he used though was even like some, <clears> like, <throat> like a week thing or something like that. And he was like doing a week, like peddling, like, don't like what is it hot dogs outside of a, a movie place or whatever a stadium you can still make the same amount of money so it it really depends on how much money you're putting in i don't have that much money right now but when i start making significant significant amount of money i'm definitely going to just put it right into the index funds what i will say though um dang i really just forgot oh no nah. <laughs> oh no 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 no, right. sorry, sorry. So I am inv- I am uh, I still put like little increments of money in as like a fail safe. Um, when I was debating on whether I should take my entire portfolio out of uh, M one to to basically invest it to the photography business I had, uh, I was talking to Noah about like should I even continue investing? And uh, what I decided on doing was um, putting in like fifty. I think it's fifty dollars a week because after calculating it out, if worse comes to worse and I have to. I have all my endeavors fail. At least I'll have like this fifty dollars a week, which will eventually compound to like either a million or two million, I think. And that's like accounting for inflation by the end of what is it? Sixty five. Okay. It's yeah, sixty five. So, so when you turn sixty five, you're saying when I turn sixty five. Yep. And how so old are you right now? Twenty. So that's a lot that's, of time. That's fifty dollars a week. Yeah, fifty dollars a week. That's I think crazy. it was like tech, like fifty five. It's and I'm I'm also invested. Now this is gonna be a little sketchy because I don't know how. 
cryptocurrency is going to work, but I also invest $50 in crypto a week too. So, I mean, I don't know where that's going to take me. Uh, Bitcoin, Cardano, and Ethereum. And honestly, I just got those from Matt. I don't really focus on those. It just goes in. Haven't checked my portfolio, but it was looking good last time I was looking at it, so I was pretty happy. <laughs> but then it, I'm I'm never happy for too long because it can turn like tomorrow. In fact, some people just got scammed. I heard out of like Squid Coin, like some people. I don't know if you heard about that. No, bro, that did not enter my timeline, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro yeah. <laughs> I do not care yeah. about that. It was like, it was but like I, I like crypto though. But these random yeah. coins, yeah, random coins, yeah. Cool. It, it went up to like two thousand and it dropped to zero either today or. I oh, like, that's I'm lying. I did hear about that because Rashad from Earn Your Leisure had posted something about it. Oh, really? Where it went up like 28,000% or yeah. something crazy like yeah. that. And then yeah. the owners just completely cashed out. Zero. <laughs> yeah. Cashed yeah, out. that's what we call a pump and dump, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Is that, a, is that, <laughs> is that why... illegal? Like technically illegal uh, or? No. Because they just pull that uh, money out, and right? Technically, it's, it's typically public information when people are going to do that anyways because you can like... This is why fundamental analysis is important if you're going to be buying like individual things versus buying like an ETF or whatever, because um, like you can see the holders of these coins and with stocks, you can see the holders like you can see if there's a whale that just owns everything. (laughs) If there's one or two people that own basically the whole thing. Yeah. Like you need to check for that, bro. Um, Yeah. But real quick, when it comes to stocks, I'm actually, no, I am going to go over it in here. So I don't need to talk about it right now. Yeah, but that's that's basically it uh, for the intro. Um, I, keep, I was going to say little, real quick. Safe, but yeah. I was going to say real quick. There is an argument to be made for people that um, that do want to invest in individual stocks and make it their thing, even though like they're starting out with a smaller amount of money. Um, like Sometimes it will still work out well in the long run, but I will say it would also just be very efficient for them also to focus on increasing their revenue in other ways so that they have capital to invest so it doesn't necessarily have to just be like a one or the other type thing you can kind of kind of blend the two um but yeah that was all i had to add to that real quick i understand your perspective a lot though it makes a lot of sense and i think that that's how it should probably be for most people all right so i can share my screen now i can wrap yes sir all right, hopefully I don't share anything weird, bro. Stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that? All right, um, real quick, though. So if y'all are looking for some some ETFs, specifically from Vanguard, because you don't want to like do the research on individual stocks, I'll put this link in the description of where you can find this. Um, but yeah, so they'll go through, and if you don't understand what some of these things mean, I'll explain it real quick, but you can kind of also do your Googles if you would like. <laughs> you should, you should, but, you should. Yeah, so this is going to be, like, right here, it's starting off with large cap stocks. So typically, this means, like, these are the bigger uh, companies in the world. You know what I mean? Well, this is specifically United States, so U.S., not the world. But, um, yeah, so you can kind of scroll through the list and see these different things. Like, if you want, if you're looking for a lot of growth, there's a growth ETF. Dividend appreciation for you, dividend people, weirdos. High dividend yield. <laughs> nah, y'all, y'all are kind of cool sometimes. Um, S and P five hundred. There's VLO. That's Bay right there. Uh, you got your mid caps. <laughs> you got your small caps. If y'all are interested in that too, and then there's also sector and specialty ETFs, which I really like these as well. Um, but yeah, so if you're interested in consumer discretionary, um, consumer staples, energy, financials, you guys can go through the list. Uh, this is what we were talking about before information technology vgt healthcare and that way you don't really have to go through um the time it takes to do fundamental analysis on these specific stocks like you might just find a sector that you're really bullish on like you think is, is going to grow a lot in the future and invest in an etf and if you're looking for individual stocks it could also um, be worth it to you to look at these etfs like find your favorite etfs and see what are their top holdings and that could be a way for you to find um, stocks to invest in. But um, to start off fundamental analysis, uh, me personally, I like to use analyst reports because um, it kind of consolidates a lot of information for me and I can get a lot of information in one place. Um, so I'm going to be looking at two uh, analyst reports today, but this one is from Simply Wall Street. 
Um, <clears throat> I believe it's like ten dollars a month if you want to subscribe to it. Um, but yeah, so it starts off going like through the company overview. So you can click about the company and it, it will tell you a lot of information about it. So you have like a quick summary of what this company actually does, how does it make money, etc. Um, Apple, yes, sir. Yeah, we have Apple on the screen right now for y'all that, that don't see. But it will go through um, a summary of valuation as well. So for y'all that don't understand how to value a company, <laughs> it will be helpful for you to look at this because it, it's looking at a lot of different ratios, like PE ratios, price to earnings growth ratios as well, price to book. If you don't know what these are, um, it will actually already tell you on here as well and you can do your googles <laughs> investopedia yeah, was, is your friend too by the I way i was gonna say investopedia is one of the best resources it makes it so yeah. easy to understand but um i like this website specifically simply wall street because it will kind of like tell you just off the rip um how they feel about it or what what the ratio was saying like obviously if it has <laughs> red letters and an x next to it it's saying it's not really rocking with it all the, all the way and you can read why Okay. Yeah. So we'll also go through like their future earnings growth expectations and all that. Um, past performance, financial health. Hey, wealth is health. Remember that guy. Financial health. <laughs> <laughs> but it will tell you, for example, like their long, like how much they have in long term assets, short term assets, their financial position, um, debt to equity, all these things. It actually has their balance sheet on here as well. Um, it would be important for you guys to. Or this is something that I take into account. I always want a company to have more cash than it has debt, in my personal opinion. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to, but it's just it looks a lot better to me if if I know that they can cover all their debt at any point in time. And the reason that it's also interesting to me is because if they have a lot of cash, that also means that they have money in order to acquire other businesses or acquire new uh, technologies and do like more research and development in order to grow their business, like to invest back in, in their own business. Um, but yeah, and then the last portion of this that is important. I don't care about this dividend stuff. If y'all haven't uh, realized yet, I'm not really big on dividends. Oh, not saying it's trash. I personally just don't really care for them no, like that trash. at the stage that, that I'm personally at. Later down the line, when I'm like old and you get, you want like ten dollars like every quarter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> chill out, chill out, chill out. When you have a bag, I feel like dividends yeah, is definitely a way. And I have a small bag, but I feel like I can just I can do better if I invest for growth instead of dividends specifically. Um, but yeah, another really important thing for y'all to look at when it when you're doing fundamental analysis is the management team. And here it will kind of break it down a little bit. So obviously Tim Cook is the manager. I mean, sorry, <laughs> the CEO <laughs> of um, of Apple. Yeah, he's a manager. He's a team lead. <laughs> and it will tell you how long he's been there, how much, what his compensation is. And it will go through, oh, I was going to say a brief history. This is actually a solid <laughs> history right here. <laughs> but yeah, you want to you wanna look at the management team as a whole to see, like, do they know what they're doing? Can I trust them to, to make, like, the correct moves with my money? And what is their track history? Because it will also tell you, like, the different um, companies that they may have worked with or worked at. Um, and what the positions were there. Um, but yeah, this this is incredibly important to look at. And it has a list of like the whole leadership team here as well. So you can do research on all of these people if you really want to. I probably wouldn't do all of them. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. But you definitely want to know about the, the CEO and a, and a couple of other key people as well. Um, and another very, very, very important thing for me personally, the ownership breakdown. So for me... I will not invest in a company if institutions, what it says right here, if they're not the majority shareholder. Because for me personally, like there's an argument against it, and I'll address that as well. But I like to I like to play where the wolves play, is how they say it. I like to follow the smart money. So if, if they're like the majority ownership, and the institutions would be like, it will say right here, top shareholders. Like, if I don't see, like, Vanguard, BlackRock, <laughs> if I don't see these type of companies, T. Rowe Price and all that, if they're not in here, State Street, yeah, I'm cool, bro. I'm good. So a lot of these more so, like, pump and dump type of situations that happen in the, in the stock market, you can see institutions do not hold the majority of it. It's what they would call 
No disrespect, guys. <laughs> Dumb money. <laughs> general public. Like, if this is the, the majority ownership, uh, general public, or even, like, private companies sometimes, like, if it's just a, a VC firm and they're just pumping their own stock, yeah, I'm cool, bro. I'm not. I'm not trying to be there. That's that's not for me. I might trade it. I haven't done that ever. But you know, over time, I, I might trade that with y'all. But I'm about to pump and dump too. <laughs> not gonna be a bag holder, bro. Y'all, y'all got that. Um, another analyst report that's also very well and also gives you like their estimated price target is Zach's. Me personally, uh, like Zach's is a subscription based service. I think it's like fifteen dollars a month, maybe. Maybe a little bit more. Um, I don't pay for that, but if you have an account with Fidelity and you can just make an account whenever you want, um, you can actually get some of their research reports for free. So you would just scroll down, you'd hit research reports. Oh no, nah, it's making me log back in. That's crazy. That really is crazy. What's the right, password, so me... boy? Nah, y'all can't see it, right? <laughs> That's awkward. No, nah, I'll definitely block that out. All right, good looks. Yeah, I only have my employee stock purchase plan here anyways. Got, oh, you guys can't even see it anyways. Word. All right, so you would hit research reports. I look specifically for Zach's. Y'all might have a couple others that you're interested in. I like Zach's, though. So this is another one that's good. They're typically pretty conservative on their price targets, which is a good thing for people that are scared <laughs> about losing money. Um, but yeah, so they're... Six to twelve month price target for Apple is one seventy one, and what is this was released November first, so yesterday. Um, how do I get back to that actually? So another thing that you guys can do when you're seeing price targets is say for example you want like a fifteen to twenty percent return on a stock, right? So you would discount the one year price target by fifteen to twenty percent. So. I don't know if you want to do the math real quick, Joel. <laughs> but what is... Yeah, um... sorry. There was really a whole call. I thought this entire podcast ended for a second. We're good. Yo, this okay. man. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't hear any of that. But let's say a 20% discount, for example. So what is 171 times 80% mm -hmm. or 0.8? Uh, oh, All right, I did 170 on accident, but it's 136. So Same you can thing. assume it's like... Yeah. Yeah, so if you want to, if, for example, you have faith in this price target, you would probably want to get in around 136 if you're looking for a 20% return in this time period. You got to do your own research, though, and you got to have conviction behind uh, your investments so you can hold through, like, the dips and all that. But, yeah, so this will also give you their summary um, of the company. They give you, actually, a lot of information, but... Yeah, so it'll kind of tell you like a few things that's going on with the company in this overview as well. Um, and reasons why they believe that you should buy, as well as what are the risks or reasons that you may want to consider selling. So I, I personally like these types of reports a lot. And this is why I typically only invest in, um, in the bigger companies, because people are willing to do these research reports on bigger companies anyways. Which is kind of annoying. I hate, like, no disrespect, but a lot of these people, they think that investing is about finding, um, like, this new undiscovered company or whatever that no one has ever heard of. And that's why they end up getting burned a lot. <laughs> I'm like, if you look at just, for example, I know everyone doesn't love the S&P 500. I personally like it. Um, but obviously, those companies are all very large companies. Like They're the largest companies in the United States, and they're still running. Even if you don't like the return of the S&P by itself, look at the individual companies within just the top 10. You know what I mean? Like They, they are producing extremely good returns. <laughs> like They're still there for a reason. Um, so you don't need to find these random companies that, that just like IPO'd yesterday or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> in order to make money. That was crazy. Like, that was Airbnb when it happened. But... Well, Airbnb, like, that's no, been know, around for a while. Know, we all so know different. about it. I'm talking about these, like, weirdo companies. Um, yeah. Speaking of price targets real quick, we can actually go back to Yahoo Finance. So they actually have um, their one-year target estimates as well. So even, like, when you first – actually, let me go here so y'all can see the full process, the homepage. So you would obviously type the single the symbol up here. So for Apple, it's AAPL. 
scroll down and it will show their one year target estimate is 169.06. So that was kind of in line with the 171 that we just saw. And that's something you want to look for. You want to look for, uh, as a trader, they call it like confluence. So you're looking for like multiple kind of signals that are telling you the same thing. Um, and then if you scroll, you, ha you would have to hit analysis at the top. But if you scroll down, you can also look at their recommendation rating. So obviously one is a strong buy, two is a, is a regular buy. They have it at a 1.9. So, I mean, take that as it may. <laughs> but um, here are some things that you can look at as well in terms of growth estimates. So they're saying next year, they're only expecting Apple to grow 6.8%, which isn't really the greatest. But the next five years on an annual basis, they expect Apple to grow 15%. Well, 15.43%, which for me, is super solid. I got a question while you're doing all this. No. Yep. Uh, when you're like analyzing a stock, like typically how long does it take for you to get like a full understanding of if the stock is good or not? Like um, an actual like number, like a 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Cause I'm thinking about the people who are just like, this looks like way too much information. I know. I that's why I feel like it was good. We went over the ETF thing first, but I would yeah, say no, yeah. for like just a general thing, I would say maybe like 15 to 20 minutes for me to read all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't take too, too long, but there are like some other things where I'm going a little bit more in depth and I'll talk about those in a second, but just one more thing that you guys can look at in terms of confluence as well. Like I was talking about, you can use bar chart. See, we just type the symbol up here in the search bar. So you can scroll down to the analyst rating. They also have it as a strong buy over here. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And that's just one more thing that you guys can use. Um, and when I'm talking about these different brokerage accounts like Fidelity and E-Trade, you can just open the account. You don't have to put like a massive amount of money into it. And even if they require you to put in a little bit of money, you can put in like $50 and then just call it a day. <laughs> like put in $50 and then just um, transfer it back to your account once it clears. That's all you got to do, bro. It's not that serious. And then you have access to these links. But yeah, so when you're on E-Trade and you type the symbol up here, something else that you could look at in terms of a one-year price target is the section where it has analyst research. I actually like E-Trade a lot for this. So they have the average price target right here, 170. So they're saying it's a 13.32% upside from where it is right now. And you can actually scroll down um, and see these different analysts, like their specific price targets, what their analyst success rate for Apple is, as well as their average return. Just got so a you two and take... a half star, I'm sorry. <laughs> we have to look at like, bro, like Dang, bro. Price average analyst return four point six percent. Get out of here, boy! <laughs> I don't care about what Yo, you have to say about that? it. So that's what I'm saying. There's different things that you could look at. The analyst success rate is is very very important as well. So for 49%. him, it's forty nine percent. Bro, get out of here, son. So yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't really care about what he's talking about, but it's just something else that you can keep in mind. So, um, I gave you guys a couple different things in terms of finding out like a price target. And this is important too, because I'm going to be talking about like longer term options trading. So that's why these specific price targets are important. When you're truly doing fundamental analysis, I don't really know if having a one year price target is the most important thing in the world because you're trying to hold like forever. But for me, it is actually very important. So I'm trading it. And then um, last thing when it comes to E-Trade, they also, I think Morgan Stanley may have acquired them recently. So you can hit, um, you can actually get an analyst report from Morgan Stanley as well. So their analysis and their price target. So they have it as 164. So a little bit lower than what we previously seen. But last thing, or there's two more things actually that um, are kind of important to look at. You would want to look at the company's investor relations page um, to get basically information directly from the source. So they have investor updates over here. You can go through their quarterly results, the news for like anything that they're releasing or they're working on. <clears throat> something I like to look at a lot, or something that you probably should look at is a 10K. So this is like an annual report. So it's gonna tell you like everything that they worked on throughout that time period um, and what they plan on doing next. There's also the 10Q, so quarterly reports. I look at those a lot as well as more importantly, in my opinion, um the conference calls i love the conference calls um each quarter because that's when they're like if you don't want to sit there and read a whole report 
um, you can just listen to the conference call. So that's going to be them discussing like the financial results for the quarter. Um, and something that's also very important in them is you get to hear questions from other investors, bigger investors, like the institutions, like people from, excuse me, like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs and things like that. The smart money, like we were talking about and them kind of like grilling the company to make sure that like, if they're going to continue to invest, that these people have like a true plan as to how they're going to grow their money. So that's something that's really important when you're looking at like in, like fundamental fundamental analysis for a company. You want to have a clear like plan of like or a clear understanding of what this company is actually going to do in order to grow your wealth. Like what is their what is their game plan? What is their strategy? Um but yeah, a lot of the the reports that I went over discussed that, like specifically the one from Zach's definitely goes in uh into detail about that. Um, and then another thing that I'll do, like once I'm already invested in a company is like in the morning as part of my morning process is I'll read like, I'll, I'll try to read like one article a day about the company Monday through Friday. So when I wake up in the morning, I go through my process or whatever. And I'm like, let me just read at least one article so I can keep up to date, um, with these companies that I own, because that's the thing. Like, you can't just look at it as, oh, it's just, it's just a stock or like, I just own a couple shares or whatever. Like, no, bro, you have ownership yeah, yeah. of yeah, a I'm whole company, like bro. Like, you need to pay attention to what your company is doing. Um, but yeah, I think that's essentially all I have. Um, oops. Unless you have anything else. I was going to say, you know? I think I like that first source you had probably the most. You said it was like $10 a month. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you're going to put the links for all these in the description anyways but i i remember like when i was doing like fundamental analysis it was like honestly annoying to look through like the 10k and 10q reports it's cool mm -hmm. i was like cool that it's public knowledge but i was like yo i wish i really wish that someone made this easier and that's i mean i probably have i'm like predisposed to not like this stuff anymore especially after what i said before but that's cool i think you brought a lot of information to the table the question i have for you is do you use all of those sources like every time or do you like use like a few one or two or like what is your method no nah, so this is what this is like the annoying thing about like when i explain things because i'm very annoying <laughs> and i'm looking yeah. for like a lot of confluence like i'm big on like pattern recognition i, I need to see like a couple different sources telling me the same thing so yep. me personally i go through all of those things every time but since i'm so used to it i can go through it like extremely quickly so it doesn't yeah. really take me long at all um but yeah i also definitely prefer analyst reports over reading i bro i don't even know <laughs> like when the last time i read a 10k was i'm never reading a 10k again bro i don't oh, care yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i don't oh, i yeah. typically um i think i don't know if i said i read i read 10 Qs, but i actually do not read 10 Qs. i listen to the conference calls and then i might look at like the 10 Q real quick but i'm looking for like very specific things i typically will not sit there and read like the entire thing um, yeah, but they also right. have like investor presentations and all that, uh, just to keep people up to date on that investor relations page as well. But every public every public company is going to have an investor relations page, so you want to you want to check uh, that out if you're going to be investing in individual companies. And if it seems like a lot of work, this is why we told you you don't have to do it, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it kind of like is. A lot of work it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but you but I mean you, you do need to do it if you're going into this like if you're trying to do what you're doing if you want to be I guess a hundred percent sure that what you're investing in is legit then you, you kind of do have to do it yeah if you want to have conviction behind what you're doing and you're not just gonna get scared when you see like a dip in the market it's like bro yeah. I've done all of this research like I know I know that this company I bought is gonna do well I don't care what anyone has to say I don't care what the market is saying right now if they want to tank the stock by like 10 15 percent bro Work. Said, don't care. Say less. Like, said, work. Yeah. <laughs> you just you potentially like uh, gave me a deal on the stock. Like now I can buy it, buy even more at cheaper prices, which would be dope. So it's like that's how you have that that type of mindset because you put in so much work initially of truly understanding it. That's what fundamental analysis is. Like you're you have a very good like fundamental understanding of how this company works and potentially like how it should be valued and what you're expecting it. Um, what you're expecting the growth to be like because on a daily basis specifically with the stock market it's it's run off of emotions anyways like they, these things are just moving up and down like just because like we're gonna talk yeah, about technical right. analysis right. next time so like it's a little it can sometimes be a little bit more uh complicated than just emotions all over the place but yeah i mean you, you just you just need to understand why you're buying what you're buying okay 
Yeah, so I think that's, I mean, we you did a pretty good job at squeezing that in kind of quickly because we <laughs> but uh, that's awesome. So, yeah, I guess next week we'll talk about technical analysis updates on what we have. Please talk oh, to us. Oh, so sorry. If y'all don't understand what technical analysis is, that means like reading charts, reading chart patterns of stocks. Yeah. I think I like fundamental analysis more anyways, but I'm, I'm, I haven't done too much technical, so it's going to be a learning experience for me too, to be honest. Uh, but I hope everyone enjoyed that podcast. We'll see you next week. Um, you have anything else to say, Noah? Nah. No, nah, <laughs> all right, so. cool. But, awesome. well, actually, no, I don't. Never mind. No, nah, yeah, no, no, no. But all right. we'll catch you all next week. Hope you enjoy your week or something like that. I don't even know what to say. The other day. <laughs> something hey, like, like that. and subscribe. <laughs> yes, like sir. Subscribe Hit the notification real. bell. Notification bell. If you made it this far, uh, do you you clearly like us. Yeah, so. clearly you're a real one. Yeah, you clearly yeah, yeah, you clearly, clearly rock real. when it's heavy. Yeah. So, so. All right, we'll catch you on the next week's episode. Have a great night or day or wherever you're at.